usually when I do a video, I write a script and I think it through and uh, then rehearse it with Nita before I video it. But I'm doing it a little different this time. I'm uh, I'm I'm going to respond to a comment that I received um, against the video I did yesterday, uh, where I said stocks are on sale, and I think it listed Amazon and Google and Apple and Facebook. And I went on in that video basically saying that um, now is the time to buy them. And I got this response. Hi, Carrie. Are you saying that you think now, today, is the time to buy these stocks? Amazon is hitting all-time highs, and its P.E. ratio is 112. At what price is it not a good investment? Microsoft, Apple, and Facebook are trading near all-time high. Google and IBM are still down 12 and 18% respectively off highs. Are these companies immune to the huge losses the other large corporations will be reporting in Q2? Do you think these? Uh, do you think there will be a second sell-off this summer due to the economic fallout, uh, with the market returning anywhere near the lows we saw in mid-March? That was from um, his handle is B. B H A M 67. I'm assuming he lives here in Birmingham. Uh, that's the abbreviation for Birmingham. If it is 67, um, give me a call sometime and we'll have coffee after this uh, virus thing passes. But let me respond to that. Uh, we're in a unique time, and I think what you're seeing and what I see again this morning is two different stock markets. You've got one that you and I are familiar with, the world that we live in, uh, and that world is made up of restaurants and hotels and cruise ships and airlines and grocery stores and um, big box stores and shopping centers. That's the world we live in, automobiles. Um, and then there's a whole other world that we don't know a lot about, and at least I don't, or didn't. And that was, that's the world of technology. Um, there are some young minds and maybe some old minds out there that know a whole lot of things that are, we don't know anything about, and they are concepts that we don't understand. I, I, I look back now with humor on uh, Warren Buffett's comment a uh, number of years ago that he doesn't own Microsoft and he didn't own Apple uh, because he didn't understand their business and he doesn't buy anything that he doesn't understand. And Warren's actually a little older than me and I understand what he's saying now. He understood the airlines. He dumped them this week. He understands Coca-Cola. He understands uh, American Express. It's one of the few stocks I own right now that I'm down on. Um, that's the world he lives in. Well, what Warren needs to understand and what you need to understand, and I'm beginning to understand, is there a whole other world out there that's moving at, at laser speed that we don't know a whole lot about. We, we, we read about the concepts, but we don't really understand them. One of them that I've been addressing and I've been learning about is that of the autonomous automobile and ride sharing. And I did a video where I shared that I have $200,000 worth of investment sitting in my garage that is depreciating every day. I, and, and I didn't have a choice. I needed to buy a car, but that day is changing. Do I think that Nick Saban's uh, Mercedes dealership or the, the, the BMW dealership and the Porsche and the Lexus and the Maseratis are going to go out of business? No, I don't, because there are going to be some fools left like me who make more money than they really need, and they're going to go out and buy those trophies that they can drive around and show the world that they've made it. But there's a whole other element of the population who's 
who doesn't have that extra $50,000 to invest in an automobile and will say, hey, I think I'll just use ride sharing from this point on, and when I need a car, I'll rent a car, and I'll get rid of that $60,000 worth of depreciation in my garage. And my wife only goes to the grocery store or she has a job downtown, and we don't need that. Well, that's a different mindset. That's not a world that you and I are familiar with unless we have educated ourselves. And that's another thing I want to talk to you about. Most of us refuse to educate ourselves after we graduate from whatever highest degree of education that we get. And that is damn stupid. There is so much information out there that if we will separate ourselves from the masses who know about grocery stores and, and, and restaurants and, and cars and, and, and hotels and open our minds up to the other world that's happening. And that's the world of artificial intelligence and, and robotics and, and 3D printing and big data and quantum computing and all these words that we don't know a lot about but are converging. And when I say converging, you really need to understand this. One of the th and as I was talking to Nita, I thought, where else was there a convergence that really changed the world? And I thought about Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford was there with, in his shop building a few automobiles, and then he learned about the assembly line. And so he created a makeshift assembly line, and they started pumping these cars out on a regular basis. And within four years, within four years, there were more automobiles on the roads than there were horses and buggies. And what you've got to remember, there were no roads. There was no cement roads. There was no blacktop roads. They were just mud and dirt. And there was... It, it was not functional to drive a car, but yet they did. And within probably 10 years, there were over 300 manufacturers of cars. There was, there was a company called Ford. There was, a, there was Buick. There was Oldsmobile. There was Cadillac. There was Chrysler. There was Dodge. And then there were all over, all over the world. And this convergence of those two things... The automobile and the assembly line changed the world for a hundred years. And now we have a convergence probably of somewhere in the neighborhood of, I, I would guess, 15 technological changes that are going to hit us within the next three years. And our world is going to change dramatically. And, and then, uh, in addition to that, you have a very big change of my generation dying. And, 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 and how that is going to change the real estate industry, the, the automobile industry. Again, my generation believes there needs to be two cars in every garage. If you're 20 years old, you're going to be convinced in the next five years that maybe there doesn't need to be two cars in every garage. And some of you are going to have the opinion, there doesn't need to be any cars in my garage. Some of you are going to learn about artificial intelligence and learn that this thing, I heard on TV today, a, a guy said he is the, he is the head of the Fed in in, in Minneapolis, and he said, well, I won't be going to a theater until I know there is a cure for uh, the pandemic and, and there's a vaccine. There's no way I'm going into a theater or a sporting event. Or, and he says, in fact, I don't see myself going into a restaurant anytime soon. And, and what I got to thinking is there may not be a vaccine ever. There may not be a cure ever. But there is the ability right now today to test yourself every morning in your bathroom to find out if you have a communicable disease. They're doing it in China. They're doing it in South Carolina. Their phones are verifying as they walk down the street they do not have the coronavirus. That is a technology that is, is there. And, and, and it's going to happen, whether we like it or not. And if you say, there's no way I'm going to expose my privacy to that, that's your choice. You could still be in a horse and buggy. That's your choice. 
You don't have to drive a car. You don't have to change to the convergence of technology. You don't have to be a part of it. And then you'll die, and the next generation will come, and they'll look back at you and say, do you believe that guy would not? It's change, and it's coming so damn fast. And there are two different stock markets. One of them is saying, hey, this is going to be terrible. And the other one is saying, ha, 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 what I know that you don't know. And if you have not read these three books, and I said yesterday, and, I, and I'll say it again, this is a master's degree in investing, what I'm holding up here, right here. Uh, the future is faster than, than you think, the big nine, and the accidental superpower. If you will spend $75 on, uh, amongst these three books and read them, if you'll do it like me, it's also on my phone under Audible. So I sit and, with headsets on and I read the book and listen to the book because what I know is there's so damn much information in here and if I can get it into my head and if I can understand it, I've got an advantage over everybody. I, I, I mean, be, be realistic. Even with me pumping these books, you don't buy them. Even though I'm telling you, and you come to my channel, that this will change your life, you don't buy it. And 99% of you will never buy it. And 99.9% .9 of the world will never buy them. And so, I have an advantage over you because I spent the $75 and then I spent another 15 bucks on each one of them. So that's what? That's $105. And I understand this shit. I really do. And so when I tell you, a BHM 74 or whatever it is, that these stocks, they may go down a bit, but what does it, what does it matter? If they're that far ahead of everybody in the world, and I invest in them, I know, I know as I sit here right now, Amazon will be a $5,000 stock. Unless they split it up and divide it out, it's still, I'm going to get benefit as a $5,000 stock. I know that Microsoft is going to be a big player in, in, in cloud computing. I know that. Because I've read and I've searched and I've researched, I know that that Google is not going to be in the advertising business in 10 years. No, they're not, because there's no, going to be nobody to advertise to that's human. All my dis purchasing decisions will be made by my avatar on my phone or the chip that they embed in the back of my neck to replace this phone or the glasses that I wear that, uh, that are going to talk to me through virtual reality and whatever. All these things, I know these things are going to happen. So I don't care what Google is selling for today, and I don't care that they will be out of the advertising business. And you say, how could that be? Think about where is the advertising business of the 1970s? Where are the madmen? Where are they? They're gone. It's all about search engine optimization now. It's all about Google and, 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 and Facebook. That, that, that print media stuff, that's gone. But nobody saw it. Nobody read the books. So, the answer to your question, yes, today is the day to buy the big six. IBM, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook. Today is the day to buy them. They're at bargain prices. Now, they, again, they may go down 10%. I don't care. 